Good evening from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. I'm John Innsbrucker, and I'll be bringing you commentary on tonight's launch attempt of the Falcon 9 carrying the UTELSAT and ABS satellites. We've just passed the T-minus 15-minute mark, and we're continuing to count down towards an on-time launch. Launch is planned from SpaceX's Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Tonight's mission features the first dual launch of the Boeing 702 SP satellites. The UTELSAT and ABS satellites are stacked atop one another inside the 43-foot-long SpaceX payload fairing. The SpaceX team is working no Falcon 9 issues at this time. The countdown has been very smooth. Falcon 9 rolled to the pad over 24 hours ago and went vertical. We entered the countdown sequence just at T-minus three hours. Propellant loading began on time, and we're currently just topping off liquid oxygen in the first and second stages. Liftoff tonight is targeted for 10.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or three hours, 50 minutes Universal Time. The UTELSAT and ABS satellites are go. The crews are working no issue. The satellites have gone on internal power at T-minus 40 minutes and are ready for launch. Range support is go, both for Air Force safety and tracking assets, as well as the SpaceX ground stations around the world. And finally, weather is go, with only a 10% probability of uh, issues. Upper altitude winds are good. And with that, we're going to listen to the Falcon 9 launch conductor pull the team for terminal count. GNC. GNC. Count, GNC on countdown. Verify ready to go for launch. Uh, go for launch. Ground. Ground is go. VC. VC go. GC. GC is go. RC. RC go. OSM. OSM go. Rock. Rock. Perfect. Yeah, ready. CE. CE is go. MM. MM is go. LD, verify go to initiate terminal count. This is the LD. Verify and go to initiate terminal count. Copy. DC, start the terminal count auto sequence set to start at T minus 10 minutes. Proceeding with terminal count and countdown master. If a hold is called from this point forward, the terminal count auto sequence will be aborted. Indicate an abort or hold condition by saying hold, hold, hold on the primary countdown net. In this event, the VC will immediately abort the auto sequence. The VC shall not abort the auto sequence after T minus 10 seconds, and operators shall not call a hold after T minus 10 seconds. If a hold is called, all operators proceed to the terminal count abort steps in section 10.64. Tonight's mission timeline includes two burns of the second stage engine to place the satellites into a supersynchronous geotransfer orbit. The upper stage of the Falcon 9 should shut down at T plus 8 minutes 50 seconds. A second burn of the upper stage engine, called the MVAC-D, will begin just under 26 minutes into flight and last for about one minute. At T plus 30 minutes into the flight, the ABS satellite will be deployed, followed five minutes later by UTELSAT. Our webcast will end as usual after the first burn of the upper stage engine. Now a note of caution for the viewers tonight. We may not be able to bring live video through the end of the first burn of the MVAC-D engine. We are experiencing data transmission issues from our Bermuda ground station that would cover the last minute of that burn. We will see in real time if we have video and vehicle telemetry. Otherwise, we will end the webcast without seeing the usual shutdown of the second stage engine. Now you've heard the SpaceX team give their go for entering terminal countdown. That sequence will begin shortly at T-minus 10 minutes, where the Falcon 9 flight computers and ground computers take control of the final events in the countdown headed to launch. So with that, we're going to listen in as we enter the terminal countdown sequence. That's 10 minutes and counting on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. VC announced terminal count has started. Terminal count auto sequence has started. GCVC, stand by and fire it. Standing by. Standing by. RC, start the tracking camera video recorders. Started. OSM, sent launch enable to flight. Flight. Stage one engine chilling in.
T minus nine minutes. We're inside terminal count at just over T minus eight minutes to launch. Currently, the pre valves have been open. That lets fuel and oxygen to the inlets of the nine turbo pumps on the Merlin 1D engines. The oxidizer bleed valve is also open on each of the nine engines, chilling in the turbo pumps to get ready for engine ignition in the last seconds before liftoff. The next major activity you'll see is the retraction of the transporter erector. Inside of six minutes, the automatic sequence will pressurize Falcon 9 in preparation for retraction of the strong back. We'll see the clamps that are around the second stage open, and the strong back will then begin to recline a moment later. Following that, inside T minus one minute, we'll pressurize the tanks to final flight pressure. Falcon 9 flight computer will command ignition, do the final checks. The ground hold down system will be commanded, and we'll release Falcon 9 for flight. Stage one heaters closing out. T minus seven minutes. Stage two heaters closing out. Vehicle switching to internal power. TVC bleed stage two has started. Six minutes. Tanks pressing for strong back retract. Hydraulic cradle open sequence has started. RP-1 bleed stage one, starting. T minus five minutes. Cradles full open. TVC motions on MVEC. RP1 bleed stage two has started. Strong back motion started.
T minus four minutes. Stage two tanks venting. Strong back fully retracted. FTS is on internal power. FTS is armed. Locks load closing out. T minus three minutes. Come back in Niner purge just started. Helium fill stage two closing out. LD verify go for launch. SpaceX Falcon 9 is go for launch. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. Rock, verify range, go. This is the rock, range is green. Helium spin fill closing out. Vehicles not all idle. BC verify Falcon 9 is in startup. Vehicle is in startup. Stage two tanks pressing for flight. T minus thirty. Minus twenty. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Vehicle altitude 3.8 kilometers, velocity 197 meters per second, downrange distance 1 kilometer.
vehicle is supersonic. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. Stage one propulsion is still nominal. Power to launch remain nominal. Vehicle altitude 33 kilometers, velocity 1200 meters per second, downrange distance 36 kilometers. Vehicle remains on a nominal trajectory. Vehicle altitude 50 kilometers, velocity 1900 meters per second, downrange distance 70 kilometers. We have Miko 1. Stage separation confirmed. And we have MVAC start. Bearing separation confirmed. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. Power and telemetry nominal. Bermuda acquisition of signal. Vehicle altitude 138 kilometers, velocity 3100 meters per second, downrange distance 370 kilometers. Vehicle remains on a nominal trajectory. Vehicle altitude is 165 kilometers, velocity is 3,800 meters per second, downrange distance 590 kilometers. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. Power and telemetry remain nominal.
Vehicle altitude 177 kilometers, velocity 4,500 meters per second, downrange distance 806 kilometers. Stage 2 propulsion is still nominal. Vehicle altitude 180 kilometers, velocity is 5.5 km kilometers per second, downrange distance 1100 kilometers. Cape loss of signal. FTS has been saved. Vehicle remains on a nominal trajectory. And we have Seco 1. Vehicle altitude 178 kilometers, velocity is 7,500 7, meters per second, downrange distance 1,600 kilometers. Well, as you saw and heard, Falcon 9 has carried the ABS and UTELSAT satellites into the low Earth parking orbit. There is a second burn of the upper stage required at just under 26 minutes into flight that will place both payloads into the supersynchronous transfer orbit. SpaceX is ending the webcast now, but remember to follow us online at our Twitter social media page and at SpaceX.com as we continue through the remainder of tonight's mission. SpaceX would like to say thanks to our Federal Aviation Administration Licensing Authority. Thank you to the Air Force for Eastern Range and Ground Station support. And of course to our UTELSAT and Asia Broadcast Satellite customers for their confidence in SpaceX. And finally to all of you for following us on today's launch. With that, we'll see you next time here from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California.